so good evening everyone welcome to the school synergy session of 2023 organized by center of excellence in teacher education cet this mumbai the theme of uh, this session is learning from practice and this session is titled reflection on teaching of social science in schools this session will be led by professor imon nandi who teaches at center of excellence in teacher education this mumbai this is a little different session from the sessions which have happened before here we will be talking to you the exploration will be kind of where people from the academia and practitioners that is you will be exploring together and will be reflecting uh, will be looking at the reflections from social science classroom so so this is how this session is going to be like uh, imon will tell you more so over to you imon thank you so much for agreeing to uh, to conduct this session thank you avnish and a warm welcome to all of you who managed to join this like online meeting despite your busy schedule i know how busy you are especially on a friday that's too falling in between the holidays and thank you for being with us so i'll just quickly introduce like how we have designed uh, you know like quickly discuss how we have designed this session today so uh, i must confess that there is a personal agenda behind that because i teach social science education as an as the part of an advanced specialization in cete this mumbai and all my students are here so i'm delighted to see them here so so it's not only the teachers there are students as uh, well and uh, so achla samvit kishor ambili diksha alankrita minal sandhya mondeep and rekha i think rekha couldn't be here but apart from rekha all nine of them are here and so along with this nine students and avnish i will be moderating this session uh the purpose of conducting this session is just to learn from your experiences you know uh, i'm sure many of you have been teaching social science since long and we really want to know that you know uh about your experiences what are the challenges you have faced and what are the opportunities that you could see in future for social sciences uh teaching in school so just to give you a brief idea about the course that we offer uh so we as i just mentioned so we have a course called social science education and this course attempts to help students to appreciate you know learning and teaching social studies in schools and we try to understand that was the relationship between education and the social realities our concern is uh, that how to teach social science in a meaningful way so that students not only get drowned in you know the textbooks or the task they are assigned to but also they can make a meaning of the life outside the classroom as well as inside the classroom so i'm sure like uh, many of you possess more experiences than all of us so i would really you know uh, appreciate if you could share your experiences of teaching social science and what are the some things that have worked for you as well as you may share that what are the some you know there could be some things which couldn't work for you which didn't work for you and you realize that that's not the way to teach social science or you have realized that's the best way to teach social science okay so from that point i would like to start the session so it's an open call to all of you who have taught social science in schools so please volunteer to share your views that you know how you look at social science teaching in schools or as nowadays it's termed as social studies right so any one of these so anyone can just i I'd, i'd appreciate if any one of you can start with this general broader question uh 
Uh, is so, there anyone who teaches? Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. And please, please introduce yourself so that we can we know each other. Okay, so this is Hemanju. Uh, uh, I'm from Yanam Pondicherry, and I have completed my master's in education and my psychology, and pursuing my PhD in education. About to pursue, sorry. Yes. Uh, so I used to take online tuitions for this uh, social studies. Uh, I think from Giju by Badekha, there is one book, and soon after reading that, uh, I felt, oh, why don't we try? You know, uh, like he has listed so many teaching techniques in his book. Okay, and practically how they are working. So here, uh, yeah, I, I was teaching. Uh, my student, he was of uh, eighth standard, uh, teaching history to him. So I started using storytelling technique. I didn't tell him uh, it was about French Revolution or something. Uh, yeah, I started telling you some. Uh, I started telling uh, like a story. Okay, there was one person and uh, there was one king and there were uh, uh, the people who uh, who were not. Uh, who were against the rules, and then there was some fight, and uh, this, uh, this, and all. I, I tell, told him a story, and then I, I, uh, gave the names and who is the king, what are uh, these people, the names of them, the names of the main important persons, all those, and so in, in that way, he was like, uh, we could, uh, do, make it good impact and he he used to recollect it so many times and he used to be very attached to it now he can re recollect it very easily but in uh, in terms of social studies if we tell it like okay there is a king and charge and this happened uh, it, they couldn't that might be not very much related to it but in terms of storytelling technique i found it very useful <laughs> yeah even soon after uh, some days if i reassess him like that was uh, he could recollect it very easily than other techniques. Thank you, Hemanchu, for sharing your experience. In fact, I think one of our uh, students, Sandhya, Sandhya, are you here? You had a question related to history teaching, right? You can ask Hemanchu. Uh, um, hello, ma'am. Good afternoon. So uh, my question is, um, what are the major challenges are there in the social science education uh, regarding to history? Means, um, uh, so if we, if we can uh, go to our past, means if any archaeological sources, uh, evidences are, uh, we can find out that, and then how we how we are uh, adding in that uh, curriculum. Yes, uh, Hemanchu and any other history teachers can share their experiences or, you know, just reflect on what Sandhya has asked. We are all trying to make, uh, you know, social science teaching more meaningful in the classroom. So all of us are welcome to respond. Also, Sandhya, you can uh, type your question in the chat so that others could read if they could not listen to you. Uh, so, Hemanju, if you were there, and if there are other, are there other history teachers in this group? You may just raise your hand just to, so that we can get an idea, you know, your disciplinary background. Dipali, uh, do you want to share? Oh, I just want to hear the question again. I think I need to understand. Yeah. yeah. If she can so she has put that in the chat also, that what are the major challenges are there in... So, okay. I think uh, she is on to writing. Can you be uh, more specific, Sandhya? Uh, what are major challenges are there in social science education? Is this the question? I think what she meant is that because history is interpretative and yeah. everyone has their own way of interpreting history. Yeah. So how to teach history, you know, in the classroom. Uh, yeah. So yeah, please. May I may I 
yeah yeah please so i i have been a lecturer you know i was a lecturer uh, i was teaching at uh, inter college and uh, teaching a large classroom and i used to teach history so yeah it's a very it's not very easy to teach history because i think the major focus these days is on remembering dates events so uh my personal uh, uh you know opinion is that uh, when you start teaching a subject history how do, the first thing is how do you get the children interested in teach, learning uh and dates and event dates do not matter so much as events so history is more like a storytelling so adopting a storytelling technique and perhaps linking things which are happening in your own country with an event that you are going to talk about from another country that does help in connecting people and understanding the culture because history is more about understanding cultures and civilizations so that's one thing which got the students i used to teach they got interested in learning history primarily and also taking examples if you're talking about an administ like say if you're talking about an administration um system in a country it's nothing but a any kind of administrative administrative system within the school within the college institution also so taking references from those does help the child to understand better and it's always easy to have a comparative study of different uh, you know if you're talking about administration of a particular era comparing it with the administration of a different era how different was it so that kind of it 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 helps students to start thinking on their own and trying to see differences and and also if you kind of bring them back to the present to help them understand the uh, what is happening today so then they are able to really appreciate the context in which they are learning i hope i have been helpful although i'm not teaching in school so i don't teach anymore no 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 of course it's useful and it's yes. wonderful to have different perspectives thank you uh, sandhya do you like to elaborate uh, no ma'am thanks thanks sandhya i don't know if i was helpful to you but uh, that's the way i used to teach and students were interested thank you. Thank you. yes so i think uh, arunima chakraborty posted a question in the group in the chat that students face problems in remembering the dates how are we going to deal that yes yeah. like i was also very bad with dates <laughs> but you know what happened like uh, now that i'm not i haven't studied history as part of my major disciplines but surprisingly certain dates actually have you know like they stick to my mind like i can still remember the date when maclas minute has come up and the sepoy mutiny has been you know that that has taken place so now i can remember but then when i was writing answers and questions that time i was very bad in mentioning the dates i don't know if that's the case that we are probably so focused on the questions and answers that we create a phobia and we tend to forget many things uh so so it's more like mnemonics you know mnemonics you use to teach learn remember anything so you try to relate the date with anything you know and yeah. of course when you tell it as a story people will remember it's not easy and you don't have to remember all the dates only the very very yeah. significant dates you know mm -hmm. that's it you know yeah of course of course i think anand also mentioned the same thing in the chat that every date relate with each other and anju yes, bajaj has yes 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 anju do it's you want to line. elaborate on that or share your experiences then we... yeah yeah Anju and then Ajit. Ajit has raised hand. Uh, am I audible, Ajit? Here. Yes, yes, Ajit. Please go ahead and uh, please introduce yourself so that we uh, know each other. Uh, myself, Ajit. I am working with uh, um, Jain International Residential School, Bangalore. Uh, although I am a teacher of economics mm -hmm. for grade nine uh, to twelve, uh, but I am teaching. history i have been assigned history um, for 7th and next year 8 so one thing uh, 
uh, I used to do is like remembering dates is of course a big task. Um, uh, nowadays, the idea of remembering the dates itself is uh, to be questioned. Why should we remember dates? Rather, uh, if the student is able to connect with that particular time, we have cross references. Say, for example, uh, we need to identify more than one event which happened in a particular year, if it is for, for that matter, if it is an year. Say, for example, when 1962, when the Cuban Missile Crisis is happening, parallelly, when the world powers were engaged in a, in a kind of Cold War, China has beautifully used that time to attack India. So we can remember 1962 is a year where India was attacked, attacked by China. And we can make a meaningful connection with, uh, of that with uh, this Cuban Missile Crisis. So if we can impart this culture of you know, associating events which happened in different years. And in, interestingly, when the Tiananmen Square uh, thing happened, uh, that um, shootout happened, that was the same year where the Soviet Union was collapsed. So uh, there uh, could be make very, a student would be able to make subtle uh, you know, connections and they can develop it themselves rather than, you know, uh, rather than just, just simply mugging up, they could make, you know, they could learn, uh, rather than they could learn from the history, rather than learning history. Uh, this is something which I would like to share. Thank you. Thank you, Ajit, for sharing. Uh, okay. Uh, so, that, you know, the discussion on the timeline dates and all that also led me to think about one question with one of my students, Diksha, who is here, uh, posed about the assessments, right? So if we have questions in the board exams, which are only asking, uh, you know, for the, for the actual date without any relevance to the event which has happened, which has probably ushered in changes in the you know, the way we think or the way we work, the way we behave. Uh, without that context, probably the MCQ questions are only asking about dates. So is it also related to the assessment patterns, you know, that has also uh, like affecting the way we teach and the way students learn? So first I'll invite Diksha to spell out the question, not related to history, probably for it's applicable for all the social science disciplines. like. When I, uh, I remember, so I met one, one teacher who was teaching economics and then she wanted to give some examples from Amazon and all like the contemporary examples. And the, that was in 11th and 12th standard. And the students told them that uh, as a question exam mein nahi aata hai. So we don't want to waste our time in learning the new things. Rather let's focus on uh, what's there in the textbook and because questions will only come from that part. So, Tiksha, can you just spell out your concern about the assessment and any one of you can share your experiences or your views on that. Tiksha? Uh, yes, try one. Your voice was breaking, but I hope that will be clear. Try again. Okay. Uh, now I'm audible. Yes. Yes. Hello. Uh, yeah, so what to adding to what Iman ma'am said, uh, I was wondering if, so if uh, when you teach social sciences, it is uh, a subject which is really rooted in social realities, which keep changing. So uh, you would expect uh, that the students would also inculcate a habit of critical thinking with, uh, with learning of social science, uh, because uh, Apart from history, the other things that they learn in the classroom related to social science are very transient. It's not, uh, you know, fixed. So my question was, uh, so if uh, the topics are not uh, permanent or, you know, at a fixed at one place, and it also invites critical thinking. So I was wondering if uh, the assessments that uh, go into a subject like social science also reflects that critical thinking um, part of the 
uh, you know curriculum that uh, if uh, like if we have board exams and other forms of assessment do you think that it it would be better if we would uh, encourage students to think more critically or uh, any other thoughts on what kind of assessments we could have that that would make uh, students engage in critical thinking Yes, any one of you can answer or respond to that question. There's not a question. It's like we are just, you know, keen on listening to you. So even if you are from science or other backgrounds, you can just share that how you plan your assessment, how you plan your questions, how you design, design the question paper or something. So over to you. Yes, uh, can I? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh... Yes, uh, regarding this, uh, what comes to my mind is role plays, you know, apart from the objectifying the knowledge, like how much they have learned or not, uh, if we wanted to see how much we, we got to or they have learned from the history and what important changes, the attitudinal, attitudinal changes we wanted to uh, envision. So uh, we can go for role plays and then soon after that, we can go for uh, reflections on uh, uh, or some uh, you know kind of uh, uh, yeah their opinions what do they think about it how contemporarily uh, how relevant they are is that a good uh, no. if it is helpful is it a helpful or a devastating uh, events yes one from me thank you thank you for sharing uh is there anyone who could also share their experience or the challenges they faced during, you know, assessments and all that? Do you feel that board exams are really cliche? They ask, they are asking the same questions over time. Because I remember like when we were a student, so our teachers even used to tell us that whatever comes in 2000 will not come in 2001. Rather, those questions will repeat in 2002. Again, 2002 questions will repeat in 2004. So that was the system we have gone through. So do you feel these are some of the bottlenecks that you that you face when you really wanted to inculcate critical thinking among your students? So Across Imon, disciplines. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Imon, uh, this, is, this is a subject which is very dear to my heart, you know, because I'm an educationist. I have been reading a lot on how the assessments are happening today. And it's very unfortunate that we are only teaching to the test. You know, like you just mentioned, that children want to learn only what is going to come in the exam. And they want the questions to happen exactly like that. But today, the new national policy is talking about critical thinking, which you just mentioned, and development of critical thinking, problem-solving skills. So my view is that, you know, if and multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary approach to learning. So we need to assess multidisciplinary approach. You know, if we are providing that kind of a learning methodology, then we need to, we need to be able to assess that. So there are, I think at one point of time, CBSC was, uh, uh, was uh, promoting multidisciplinary projects. I don't know whether it is still uh, underway, underway. But if, if a collaborative team project is given to students on, say, let's say three subjects, it could be English, maths, and history, it could be English, economics, science, whatever, there could be many as combinations, but the teachers have to get together to decide what are the areas of their subjects that will become a part of that project. You know, like students do projects, which is all cut and paste these days. But if the projects were to be done in the school and done by the, uh, you know, under the guidance of teachers, maybe one or two projects under the guidance of teachers, then subsequently they could start working on their own. Then the each, the same project can be assessed for three different subjects. So the assessment becomes easier. The skills of the students are being assessed. There could be various skills. You're talking about the communication, the English skill. How do you communicate by writing? Then how have you analyzed, you know, if you're looking at two other three, three subjects together and problem solving. So these uh, could be worked together. So it's, it's a very tough challenge and teachers will certainly need to be coached on that. But if teachers become passionate enough and I'm sure those who join as teachers do become passionate about teaching and learning. So 
then the next focus has to be on how teachers, because teachers will need to learn first before they make the student learn. And this is one kind of way in which a group project itself, a group so assessment it doesn't have to be a bored, boring job. It has to be a fun job for the teacher also. And, it, and the students also will never feel as if they are answering an exam if this kind of an approach is used. So that's one of the things that I would, I, I would really see happening in schools now. Thank you, Dipali. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Is there anyone who wants to share your experience with the assessments? assessments? Yes, assessments? Uh, may I? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, please introduce yourself. Yes, my name is Garima Gaur and I'm teaching in Vidya Gyan Leadership Academy uh, of Shiv Nadar Foundation. Uh, from last uh, tw 10 years, I've been teaching uh, social science till grade 10. And what I have observed that like uh, I I'm always make my children responsible for the text. Like suppose if we are uh, doing French Revolution, so what I do before beginning the chapter, I divide the parts, I make the groups and divide the parts. Like you will do this, you will do this, you will do this. And then they come and then they explain. So uh, introduction of the chapter is done with the help of the students. Wherever the interference of the teacher is required, I do that. So like this, what happens, you know, they feel uh, responsible also that we have to take up this content, we have to explain. So like this, their confidence level also rises up. And, uh, you know, they don't want to uh, be like, they don't want to miss out any point because this is the matter of pride in front of their uh, peers also. So this is how half of the chapter is done. And we all know that in history, chapters are very lengthy. So most of the points are covered with the help of the students. We revise it later on. And then whatever is left out, that is explained by the teacher. So it is time saving also making our students responsible and their confidence level is also rising. So most of the time I use this technique in my class. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Garima. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, I'd like to, oh, don't call me ma'am. My name is Simon. <laughs> just all of you just can call sure. me. Sure. And uh, I was thinking about Samvit's question who are, who was interested in uh, social science pedagogy. So Samvit, uh, do you want to come in and then ask your question? Yes, uh, sure. Go ahead. Uh, there, uh, there are disturbances in the background, so please ignore them. And uh, firstly, uh, the question which I like to share is that, uh, uh, one, one second. Uh, with reference to social science pedagogy, how question, can questioning be used as a pedagogical tool? This is my first ah. question. Sambit, can you please elaborate? What do you mean by questioning as a tool? Questioning means... Uh, mm, questioning is a tool in pedagogy which explains how it can be used effectively in social science. आप एक एग्जांपल देंगे तो इजी होगा शायद सब के लिए इजी होगा वी ऑल विल बी बिकॉज़ वी आर फ्रॉम डिफरेंट डिसिप्लिन सो विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड अच्छा अच्छा जैसे जैसे आप मतलब ज्योग्राफी में देख लीजिए कि व्हाई अर्थ इज राउंड मतलब एलिप्टिकल क्यों है ठीक है है ना और या फिर सूरज पूरब से क्यों होता है मतलब मतलब वो होता है मतलब उगता है हाँ हाँ और और मतलब ये छोटे-छोटे क्वेश्चंस हैं जो बच्चों के मन में आते रहते हैं और वो टाइम बाय टाइम उनको मिलता रहता है हाँ यस सो एस यू टॉक्ड अबाउट ज्योग्राफी सो वी वुड लव टू हियर फ्रॉम सम ऑफ द ज्योग्राफी टीचर्स आर यू हियर एंड you can please respond that how you teach social science or geography in schools and what are the ways that have worked for you? What are the things that did not work at all? So, What has been the approach of students in uh, this, uh, uh, in, in learning geography? Right. Yeah. So, so is there anyone in the meeting today who teaches geography or 
social hmm. political life or similar areas uh, I am i audible see. yes yes you are thank you okay. and kritika you can you may please your introduce yourself yes hi my name is kritika and i have been teaching geography for past 4 to 5 years um and as uh, uh, mr samvid said that yes questioning is something that i also do a lot in class but uh, along with that what i do is never do spoon feeding i make sure that you know i question them they question me and then we have a healthy discussion sometimes we you know we have a time crunch but uh, when we are questioning what i feel is that you know they think a lot instead of just answering them that you know the sun rises in the east or why we have a geoid shape so instead of just answering i question them a lot i question they ask me a question and then i ask them different questions so then you know if not the particular child is able to answer maybe some other child will you know give them a hint and then they come up with a answer and sometimes you know because uh, geography is a subject that is related to all you know it's very multidisciplinary i sometimes don't know a lot about physics and they come or chemistry and then they come i always ask them to you know whenever i am teaching geography try and interrelate it with any other subject and then tell me that ma'am this is from physics and you know this is how we can calculate the time so it's related to maths so it makes them you know interdisciplinary and then you know because i have felt why i was about in a... that only yeah you answered my question <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. So that is something that you know I have been trying uh, in my classes. Sometimes it is really difficult for me as well because students uh, at the end of the day want marks and they are more like you know, ma'am, um, answers. How do we need to write the answers? How can we write answers so that we get more marks? Mm. And that's but. still at least in formative assessments i can try these things or in my classroom so that you know their critical thinking skills are still there thank you kritika uh, this is a really useful thank you ma'am kritika ma'am thank you it's my pleasure uh, i was also yeah. wondering in a one of our classes uh, one of our students alankrita she reviewed a textbook by eklavya on geography and that was for the state of rajasthan right alankrita are you here yes ma'am and alankrita you really loved that textbook so could you please share what you loved about the textbook and why you felt it's very different from other geography textbooks what was the main features of that which you felt that it is more meaningful for the young kids to you know relate to the geography and the concepts related to it मैम फर्स्ट जैसे चैप्टर स्टार्ट हुआ था तो उसमें क्वेश्चंस काफी अच्छे से पूछे गए थे दो तीन स्टूडेंट्स से जो स्टोरी टेलिंग के थ्रू चैप्टर डिस्कस कर रहे थे एंड देन उसमें एक सबसे अच्छी चीज ये थी कि उसमें रीजनिंग का यूज किया गया था और वो अपने रिलेट कर पा रहे थे कि रीजनिंग के क्वेश्चन के थ्रू की अच्छा ठीक है अगर पहले राजस्थान डेजर्ट क्यों है मे बी पहले बहुत ज्यादा एलिफेंट्स थे तो वो सारे ट्रीज खा गए तो अब नहीं है वो डेजर्ट बन चुका है तो इस टाइप से वो लोग ब्रेन स्टोमिंग कर रहे थे जो कि वो उस बुक को बहुत डिफरेंट बना रहा था एनसीईआरटी और एससीईआरटी से मेरे पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से सो आई रिमेंबर यू आल्सो मेंशन अबाउट द स्टोरी टेलिंग अप्रोच हेलो यस यस यू आर हेलो यू आर ऑडिबल आई लॉस्ट द कनेक्शन कैन अदर्स हियर अस अवनीश कैन यू हियर मी और अलंकृत वी कैन हियर ओके Yes, yes. So, I think it's Alankrita. So uh, Alankrita's questions also let us think about the textbooks. So I'm just we all are really interested to know from all of you that what kind of a textbook you like and what kind of a textbook you really hate. That you feel that it's very difficult to teach or it's very easy to teach if you get you know a kind of a textbook that you would uh, love to teach. so is there anything that 
when you look at textbook you know what do you look at it like what do you look for what are the elements that attracts you as a teacher that yes we would go for this textbook how does that work for all of you any subjects any schools any boards this is an open question to you all Imon, ah, uh, may I? Yeah, please, please go ahead. Yes, as ah, uh, like I have taught in ICSC schools also, and CBSC. So there is a lot of difference in both the books. Like if you will see in ICSC, the content which is given that is like sorted. Ah, uh, entire content is very sorted. For every content, there is a proper heading. The child can easily understand if the child is good in English. I think the child can make out what is in the chapter, what the chapter wants to deliver, and what are the main points the child should learn. But when it comes to NCERT, without the help of the teacher, at times it becomes very difficult for a child to understand. Sometimes, uh, like if you will see the textbook of class six, seven. the uh, language of ncert book is much more difficult than the language of english english textbooks and because i am teaching in a school uh, which is yeah it is a non profit organization and we uh, give admission to the meritorious under privileged students so they are coming from a total uh, vernacular background and when they come to our school we teach them in english though we help them and we use bilingual but still it becomes very difficult for them to understand and uh, like uh, keep the things in their mind because first of all the language is new for them and the information which is given in the book is not sequenced like suppose if we have to tell about the teachings of mahatma buddha so it is not given properly that these are the teachings it is told in some other manner we have to find out that these are the teachings so i think in this way sometimes students face difficulty whereas when we come to uh, question answers in ncert the question answers are uh, really good because they they uh, uh, you know they force a child to think whereas in icsc all direct questions are there and they can easily find out the answers so usually when i search for a textbook we i try to find out ki lot more activities are there so that teacher can also get the help children should also come to know so, so, uh, many like did you know type question uh, things are should also there should be there so that their general knowledge can also be increased thank you garima for sharing that very good and yes yes you know that was very nice very nicely said thank you thank you yes thank you uh, is there anyone aur koi hai jo batana chahte hai ki aap aapko textbook kyu acha lagta hai ek particular textbook aur ek particular textbook kyu acha nahi lagta hai they just trying to understand how teachers perceive you know like hum textbook review to karte hai lekin teacher se perception se aur perspective se how do you look at that so we'll really appreciate if anyone else also share their experience uh, yes i would like to share uh... as uh, garima ma'am said and uh, i was taught in an icsc school and uh, right now i am teaching in a cbsc school so i can feel the difference because it is so sorted uh, in icsc books and i still remember and that that was maybe the reason that you know i got interested in geography because i had this book and uh, there was this transparent uh, paper on the map and the single map was used for both physical and political so the transparent paper if we put it on the physical map it would be a political map so in just one single map we could see both physical as well as political features so that is something that i also really like about i csc books um, and i have also taught in an ib school so what i felt regarding books when i compare all these books what i felt was Uh, in ib schools it is more of problem solving skills like uh, the content is very less i would say in terms of you know the written work the theory part but the problem solving skills there are a lot of uh, you know the uh, main chapter also starts with a, a activity and more activity based learning case studies like if we are studying an earthquake so they will we'll talk about the main dynamics of an earthquake but 
to understand it more deeply, we'll go through case studies. The students become reporters and then they report. So that is something that, you know, the students get interested into. If they are not interested in geography, maybe they, they plan to become a reporter or anything like, or a photographer. So, you know, they get interested in that particular area and then they, you know, like studying the subject. So that is something that, you know, including activities in the books, a lot of activities and making them colorful is something that I would want in each and every book. Thank you, Kritika, for sharing your views. Uh, Mondeep, do you want to come in because you wanted to uh, share your concerns related to how do we select content and how we develop that content knowledge? Uh, do you want to speak up? Is Mondeep here or Mondeep can hear me? Okay. So he was uh, wondering that how you know, content knowledge is selecting up and because we, we know that, you know, we have a limited time to teach the, the like the students are young, so we cannot cover a lot of issues in the classroom, but then uh, how to decide like which are the parts to focus on and which were the parts we can leave out. So that was, I think his question related to content knowledge selection. So if any one of you has been a part of a curriculum development team, or you have worked for the national and state boards for textbook development, I'm requesting you to please share your experience with us on that. Okay, uh, so we can move to the next question in that case. So many of our students, uh, you know, so they are wondering that how to uh, discuss very sensitive topics like social inequality or, uh, you know, citizenship issues or immigrant issues, migrant issues in the classroom, especially when you are dealing with a very diverse class. So uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, so basically, I think Alankrita, you mentioned this question. And I remember Achla, who is also here. So you once you talked about the challenges you faced during teaching uh, political science in your classroom that's related to citizenship issues, because that time there was a real political debate was going on outside the classroom. So sometimes that creates a bipolar kind of a situation inside the classroom that one side of the students take one position and the other, other uh, half takes another position. It's difficult for the teacher to handle that situation. So then how do you manage a diverse classroom? And especially when you talk about very socially and economically, you know, like uh, sensitive issues in the classroom. Anyone requesting all of you to respond or if you have any thoughts in your mind or, you know, experiences, please do share it with us. Alankrita, do you want to formulate your question in a better way than I did? Probably that might help. Uh, hello. Yes. Actually, now my network is not. I'm not able to respond. Uh, you can put that in chat, Alankrita. I'll read it for you. I'm trying, sir, but uh, when I'm typing. Okay. There is something. Uh, Imon, you are on mute. You can please unmute. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah, I'm requesting all, right. all of you to just share your thoughts and experiences in managing a diverse background. Yes. Ma'am, has posted the question. Okay. Yeah. So she has asked, what are the sources of social inequality and how does it relate to political institutions and social structure? No, I think what she meant is like how to discuss all of these in a yeah. classroom. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So have you faced any challenges like that in your classroom? 
that when you are talking about inequality, how to make it relevant for all the students in the classroom? Ajit, yes, Ajit, please go ahead. Uh, actually, uh, I have been teaching um, international curriculum so where mm -hmm. the students come from a certain uh, class which is yes. uh, who cannot hmm. really connect hmm. with the um, hmm. with the emotional or hmm. the social background of yes. um, students who are from different strata of the society. Yes. So uh, many times what happens is that uh, just watching a video or something which may hmm. not be good enough for them to internalize the hmm. idea of inequality. So hmm. that is one challenge. Of course, that hmm. is one thing. Hmm. And the second thing uh, is again, uh, like this inequality, uh, how does it matter to them? Because a learner or always, you know, a learner keeps themselves in the center. Yeah. Uh, so what, how does it matter for me? What I am a part of, uh, how I am a part of this particular learning process? Mm -hmm. uh, that identity question is there whenever they um, kind of learn these things. And so um, to bridge that, is again as a teacher being in a class maybe for uh, um, 45 minutes or 40 minutes or even uh, for four hours in a week or so it's hmm. it's, a, it's a huge challenge mm -hmm. because we mm -hmm. uh, we cannot go beyond the scope of the framework or the curriculum or the whatever it is you know like mm -hmm. we are supposed to do as a part of our job which which is again a big challenge for any any probably any social science teacher yes. who teaches in international curriculum Yes, so I could understand that your challenge is uh, on the, you know, another extreme point. We probably don't have diversity in the class, but when you talk about inequality or poverty or probably the marginalization, it might be very difficult for your students to relate to that. I'm not generalizing, but it could be a possibility, right? So, yes, I can relate to your one challenge. Thing, uh... Mm -hmm. Between there's one thing, uh, there's of course diversity, which mm -hmm. I've experienced maybe in terms mm -hmm. of uh, people from different ethnicity, uh, people mm -hmm. from different nationality, yeah, yeah, those sort yeah. of diversity is there. But then right. um, uh, this uh, inequality thing is uh, more or less, you know, it's something which cannot be mm -hmm. discussed in a way where they can internalize it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, Savita has posed a comment that I'm not concerned with the subject, but so many times I think the question is general, why we teach social science like history in our classroom and how connect, connect it with science. Thank you, Savita, for, for mentioning that point. We were coming to that. So Veda social science is a science. And I think, uh, Achla, can you, can you come in? And because you, you had something in your mind related to the efficacy or the purpose of teaching social science. So can you spell out, Achla? Yes, ma'am. So actually my question was, uh, you know, it was basically related to the relevance of social science as a subject. You know, it's, it's a general perception these days that uh, when people think of, uh, you know, of course, of pursuing a subject, they're actually thinking of long term. So they think of, mm -hmm. you know, return mm -hmm. on investment. So they're like, uh, generally, uh, you know, for STEM subjects, it's it's much more. So people and students and the parents also, they're like, everyone is more interested in uh, these subjects, science, maths, economics, probably. And in this race, I feel, you know, social science is something which is lagging behind and it's losing out so yeah so i the question that i had was you know what can be done from the end of us teachers to uh, deal with this uh, you know problematic situation that is there and it's become more of a of an existential question also like these days there is you know it's there in the discourse also like uh, is social science as a subject going to exist in the near future? Not now, but maybe after uh, a few years. So these are some of the questions that uh, I was trying to find answers to. Thank you, Achla. 
And may I also request Minal to speak up because she also had a similar question. Hello. Yeah. Um, so I was asking, uh, like, uh, when we are um, choosing any subjects for 11th and 12th classes, most of our uh, parents prefer or we go, we are dragged by the peers to choose science and math streams. <clears throat> because they are more kind of give you more of uh, career opportunities. Ki matlab maths and science le loge to sab kuch ho jayega. You can go into any streams. So I was uh, asking uh, like uh, how to develop uh, because development of the subject will come when there is a, some kind of a career uh, development uh, we see in the social science stream. So how how can we uh, like motivate students to take social science subjects? Or if we are take, like in the social science subjects also, how the pedagogy can be taught in such a way so, so that they can get encouragement to, to stay with the subject, to learn more about the subject. Hello. Yes, thank you, Minal and Achla. Uh, is my question. Uh, Minal, we could hear you, but uh, we could get your question. And but at the you know towards the end your voice was breaking but I think we are good enough like we could understand what you are mentioning. Ajit has raised hand, but before that I also wanted to point out that this is probably uh, true for all of us, irrespective of where we teach, what we do. All of us who have studied social science, we are under pressure because of this utilitarian view. Ki social science par ke kya hoga? Even that has a very you know like science or STEM subjects ka hegemony bhi hai. Like it, it has to come from the employers as well because when even an employer is employing a clerk or someone who probably will do data entry or probably will take notes and those skills could be possessed by anyone irrespective of which uh, subject they have studied. Anyone from social science can also do that. Anyone from scientific like STEM field can do that. But the employers also has an assumption that those who have studied STEM, they are better skilled than those who have studied social science. So there is, an, is a disparity in the labor market as well. And Ajit, uh, I know you, are, you wanted to share your experience. And Ajit, I just wanted to tell you that I have also studied economics. And I know even within social sciences, there are disparities. Like some subjects, sociology and psychology, they are supposed to be more, you know, close towards science and subjects like history, political science or sociology, they are like, they are more kind of art subjects, which apparently do not have any prospects, but that is so, you know, not at all true. So Ajit, please go ahead and share your experiences or views on that. Um, thank you so much, uh, am I audible? Yes, you uh, are. Can you yes. Hear? yes. Um, actually, uh, I am basically from science background and so thought of, you know, just sharing on this. Uh, I did my graduation in physics. Uh, of course, being so, uh, I had to go through uh, the math part of the whole thing. Um, one thing which, uh, you know, uh, many students face uh, of late in their, uh, you know, maybe graduation or wherever is that uh, when they go into a pure social science stream, uh, there are certain gap which cannot easily be bridged. Uh, it is mostly centered on mathematics. So uh, that's where even employers or those who are on the other side receiving end, they also feel uh, social science is more of, you know, like a right brain thing. And there is not much of, <laughs> so there's a, there's a uh, it, it need not necessarily be a misconception. So what we could do primarily uh, is to integrate the learning. When we learn social sciences uh, right from a very early age, if that is properly integrated with the science, meaning math, um, science become more objective because of its math, uh, you know, inclination towards math. Uh, so if it can be, uh, one, one thing I did, uh, 
while teaching because uh, many times uh, students will ask i i uh, teach grade 7 where they ask sir why we study this medieval era stuff why don't you teach uh, world war we want to learn that so uh, I, as a teacher i don't have much choice over the syllabus which i cannot teach them at this point of time which is not as per the syllabus so i have to get a convincing answer for them so uh, what I, I i said is you students i mean uh, well, why should you learn because you uh, me he or she they whoever you know human being human being is a coordinated being so one axis is of course time other one is space and we are we have a time and space coordinate at any point of time so we need to study the time factor which is nothing but the history and space which is geography uh, beautifully some of the students understood in a grade 7 you know they were able to connect it with because they study they do graph they do math basic math so they can kind of understand it was then the then next level is to convince them why should we uh, study which is you know thousand years back or thousand five hundred years back uh, so if we have uh, we are able to integrate science pure science with the study of society or human evolution students can better relate uh, and they will rather become better social science students than you know moving away from science and you know kind of facing difficulty just because of that so this is one thing i have to share and uh, we have to take initiative we teachers or we uh, you know teachers fraternity has to take that initiative we children cannot do it by themselves especially in a tender age thank you ajit is there only anyone else who also wanted to share their views on this meanwhile uh, feedback form is there in the chat and okay. you can uh, fill it yeah okay and uh, yeah. probably we can move to another concern and that's related to the pandemic uh, ambili are you here uh, because though there were you know ict tools available even before the pandemic but even we have uh, been used to that even more after the pandemic or during the pandemic so how are you uh, how do you look at the ict tools and the resources available now to teach social sciences do you feel that they are really helpful or re really difficult to adopt or students are not uh, you know like students are not comfortable with that using smart classrooms, e-learnings and all that. What is your take on that? And Ambili, can you come in with your question? Yes, ma'am. Hi, everyone. Uh, so my question is around the tools and strategies that are used in the classroom. So I heard one of you mentioned that some mnemonics are used in the classroom. So uh, I'd like to know how uh, like certain topics are very far distant away from the child's context. So as social science teachers, how do you or what strategies do you use to uh, contextualize, to bring that closer uh, to, the, to a child's understanding so that they can understand it better? Because uh, a child living in Maharashtra might uh, take a long time in understanding how coastal waves work. So uh, if somebody could comment on that, thank you. So anyone wants to share your experience with using ICT to teach social sciences? What kind of resources, tools you use in a classroom? Is it only the textbook or the maps or all these things you use or you show some videos audiovisual tools and how do the students you know like accept those things perceive those things or does it work in social science that that's one of my major questions any one of you uh, Savita, 
Savita Rani has mentioned the scenario has been changed nowadays. Science students have started opting social science subject. That's so interesting, Savita. If if you are uh, available, can we hear from you, Savita? That, yes, ma'am. Good. Yeah, good evening. That, that's so interesting that you know it's a reverse choice that science students are now opting for social science. We are very happy to <laughs> you know hear that. So why did that yes, happen, and how do you look we at have, it? We have an institute, ma'am. Ma'am, we have a uh, Siaste, uh, there is Siaste in Gurgaon, integrated course. Ma'am, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes. Uh, that is State Institute of Advanced Studies in Teacher Education. Uh, we have student, uh, uh, if I am uh, uh, looking uh, at the counseling, uh, during counseling session, there are so many science students, plus two background, they have science uh, subjects physics chemistry math and they have opted uh, during their first year history political science geography so many students maybe what uh, would be their uh, aim uh, for upsc or anything else i don't know but they opted social science subjects my background also science but uh, um, I was shocked, science student opting for social science subjects. Even my son, he, um, uh, he selected um, for his plus one humanities. He is interested for history, political science, not for science. Beshak se mera background science ka raha hai, but bete ne nahi select kiya. This is the scene. Today's scene it is. <laughs> Actually, thank you, thank everything you. interdisciplined. <laughs> yes, yes. Someone, <laughs> someone has asked, ma'am, why is this important? <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, Dipali, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, have, I have perhaps a clue to the question that was raised a while ago on how do you teach the social sciences in the classroom. The one thing is student involvement. You know, if I may take that, you know, I'll go back again. Ajit has also been talking about the multidisciplinary approach, connecting subjects, connecting cultures, you know, taking a date and, you know, like he was talking about the, uh, the different events that happened in the same date or the same period. So like, let me take an example of, let's say we don't choose the subject or the, or the, uh, the chapter. You choose a Let's say you choose currency as a, as a theme. Now, if you look at currencies, it can be taken up as a subject in economics. Okay. It can be taken up as metals in science. And it can be taken up uh, as a history of currency. So, you know, so history also comes in there. Metals comes in there. And then, of course, you learn some mathematics also over there. Another could be if you take up let's say uh, um, let's say Ravi uh, Kabuliwala as a chapter. That's an English chapter. I mean, story in English uh, textbooks. Now, if you, uh, you it talks about uh, Pathan coming down from Afghanistan, and so you are talking about two different cultures. You are talking about the culture of India. And you're talking about the story of Bengal. You're also talking about Ravindranath. So Ravindranath, then you talk about motive, uh, who was he? Then his relationship with history. Why is he known in history? You can talk about the national anthem. You can talk about his role in history, in national movement. So that there are different connects that you can make. But you teaching should not come as a chapter. You know, I'm teaching this chapter. That's my take. You, you first need to connect. What am I going to be able to? teach by taking up a common thread across different subjects. I hope that answered. I don't recall the name of the lady who asked the question, but I hope that answers her question. You know. Yes, of course, of course. And um, similarly, similarly, if you take up, let's say, um, uh, history, again, as a subject. So you, mm -hmm, you take mm -hmm. up an archaeology, and then you take up a site, yes. and then you talk about archaeologists, the different archaeologists. Mm -hmm is how the dating happens. So that takes you to science again, you know. So there are mm -hmm. different ways of, yes, multidisciplinary approach to learning is what Himanju 
is also talking about. So these are the examples of how, so that is the only way you can get students interested in learning, but you don't need to yes. spoon feed them. You need to ask them questions. So questioning is a very important technique and questioning can only, only way to encourage and get students interested in learning is by asking the right questions. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you, thank you for pointing that out. And yeah, Minal is, uh, has made a point. Uh, so, um, see how, uh, can anyone see Minal's comment? It was like, something about career options. Popped up and then, yeah. Career options I don't can know, be given to students. Again, I have a view on that. <laughs> yeah, please share, please do share. We have time, please do share. <laughs> so, career options should not be given to students. That's my take. Let mm -hmm. them discover. And mm -hmm. this discovery can happen right from class 7, 8, 9, 10. You know, the moment they start learning subjects. NEP again talks about, somebody talks about, talked about cho choice of subjects. So the national education policy is again yeah. uh, ensuring that um, there should be uh, no hard and fast divide between subjects. That's what mm -hmm. national mm -hmm. policy is talking about. Now, career options. It can be just popped up as a question coming out of your learning, whatever you're teaching, and then let mm -hmm. them discover what is there in this, what kind of employment is there, first of all. You know, if you are teaching pot, if you're teaching history and you're talking about maybe earthenware pots and all that. So like, let them discover what is pottery. Pottery is not related to only making earthenware pots today. There is a, you know, you know, artistic and the highly priced artistic pot, pot earthenware. So that is a, another form of employment. So let the children discover employment for themselves, discover different careers for themselves. And today, there are not just careers which are visible across, you know, like doctor, engineer, et cetera, et cetera. I was just reading something very interesting yesterday, and that brought me to this point. You know, if you look back at science fiction stories, they predicted a lot of things which are happening today. Like, for example, they talked about the science fiction, fiction novels. They talked about um, internet, telephones. You know, maybe they didn't word it in those ways, but that's what they were pointing at, you know. And these are employment options today. So what will be the employment options of the future? Again, that's the creativity of science fiction writers. That will tell us. And that, that it, it requires nothing but critical thinking, analytical problem solving skills. And this is what you need to teach it. Synergizing between whatever you have learned across different diverse subjects. So these are the things that children need to learn and not chapters. Yeah, and creativity, as you rightly mentioned. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, I mean, I really don't want to stop the session because I'm really, you know, involved with right now. So Avnish, how much time do we have? Because yeah, we our should, students uh... have another presentation <laughs> after this, this session. Yeah. So how much time do we have? Yeah, we should... Uh... We are approaching towards the end of the session. Okay. The students can okay. start leaving. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we can or, or probably it. I don't want them to leave because they, they were yeah. the ones, you know, who really worked hard to formulate the questions yeah. and they are the co-moderators with me. Yeah. So all credit goes to them and all of us who has joined. So just be there for two, three minutes. We'll wrap up as early yeah. as possible. So, uh, so maybe we uh, could turn on the cameras and take one photograph. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. we could do that. Yeah. So if possible, please, you can turn yeah. on your video for a second. And now yeah. can take a screenshot. Yeah, thank you so much for turning your cameras on. This took a lot of emotional labor. <laughs> yes. So nice. So nice session. Okay. I'm really thankful to all of you and my yeah. students and of course Avnish and Dr. Ruchi Kumar who is anchoring this school synergy session. Yeah. So over to you Avnish. So uh, one request please fill this feedback form. It was so enriching to hear your experiences. The practitioners who are actually uh, practicing the pedagogic theories. The cultural understanding and correlation importance of it in history highlighted by Deepali and Ajit. Himanju shared about the importance of role play 
in critical thinking how it can be used and assessment challenges got into discussion textbook about textbook ranging from its content to content organization and language all those things we were able to touch upon so it was so insightful and enriching to hear uh, it would have been meaningful for the students as well and also the practitioners could have known that what kind of questions uh, the budding teachers are experiencing uh, or what they have in their mind so thank you so much and we can end the session now i would uh, like to thank everyone for a wonderful session i really okay. enjoyed thank it. you so much thank deepali you. for joining thank you yeah, yeah. and avnish we thank might need so another okay. session on social science very soon as yeah, yeah, you yeah. know there are a lot of issues which are yet to be discussed yeah, thank yeah, you yeah. all it's a pleasure being here thank yeah. you so feedback form or link uh, link is there in the chat you can please see uh, yeah i am putting it again once so that you can click it up and fill it thank you okay we are calling it a day have a nice day